we're going to take a look at our next shape after the cube. And again, we're looking at the different properties it has, what is the volume, what's the surface area, etc. We're going to take a look at the rectangular prism, very similar to the cube. The difference is not all sides are equal. Okay, rectangular prism looks like a rectangle on a side. So if I take a look at this shape, I can spin it around. You'll see that there are long sides and there are short sides. I can't stop this object, but if you could, you would be able to take a look at the number of faces that it has. Same number as the cube does. There are six faces to it. Four along the side, top and bottom give you six. Number of vertices, how many corners are there? Four on top, one, two, three, four. Four on the bottom, one, two, three, four. Number of edges or corners, there are 12. Four along the side, four on the bottom, four on the top. Three sets of four gives you 12. If we take a look at breaking this open, it's a 3D object. What would I have to draw on paper to cut it out, to fold it up, to make a rectangular prism? And again, this is a net. So if I hit play over here, It'll look similar to the cross, but what you'll notice is some of the pieces are short, some of the pieces are long. So you have to take account, into account what things are similar. Get rid of that stuff. So I have a long piece, which is the bottom, a long piece, which is the top, a similar long piece, which is the side, and a similar long piece, which is the other side. Then my two short pieces would be the front and the back. Your job just like with the cube, you made a net of the cube, you made a cut it out, folded it into a 3D object, two blocks by two blocks cube. We're going to do the same with rectangular prism. Now this isn't drawn to scale, but this is what your net, when you go to cut it out, fold it up to make a 3D object, needs to be 5 by 3 by 2. If I would sit it 5 long or length, 3 width, 2 in height. So again, remember, it's going to look somewhat like a cross. Now some of you may have realized you need to write your name on the net while, while it is still flat. That way when you fold it up, your name's already on the outside. So make a net of a rectangular prism, 5 by 3 by 2. Cut it out, fold it up, tape it. When it's done, it goes on my desk. Without a doubt, the rectangular prism, the, the, volume, uh, the surface area formula is one of the most challenging. Why? Because it is so long, there are so many pieces to it. Truly though, this is a fairly simple formula. SA, surface area. How many little squares does it take to cover this object? 2 times length times width. That is a chunk. I'm going to add it to the second chunk. 2 times length times height. Plus 2 times width times height. There are three chunks of very similar stuff. Each one covers a different size rectangle on this box. If you have ever noticed the shoe box, the top and bottom are the same rectangle. That's one of these. The sides are the same size rectangle. That's another one of these chunks. The front and the back is the same size rectangle. That's one of these as well. So if I had a 12 by 8 by 4 rectangular prism, you have to tell yourself, what do you want to be length? What do you want width? What do you want height? It doesn't really matter which you pick as which. The answer always works out to be the same. 8, 4, 12, which is the length? Most would say 12 is. Why? Because it's the longest. So I'm going to set 12 is equal to length. It depends how you sit this. If it's upright, sideways, it doesn't matter. 4 we will call the width. 8 we will call the height. 
All I have to do is substitute numbers in. Follow order of operations, multiply, then add, and I'll be done. So let's take a look, see if we can do this. 2 times L times W. 2 times 12 times 4. That's that chunk. Plus 2 times 12 times 8, which is height. That's my second chunk. Plus 2 times 4 times 8. Real quick, you should be able to check. There are three numbers. How this works is you'll take two of the numbers and pair them up one time. 12 and 4 match up, check. Any other 12 4s? No. 2, 12, 8. Any other 12 8s? No. 4, 8. Any other 4 8s? No. That means I did it right. Okay, multiply. 2 times 12 times 4. 2 times 12 times 4 equals 96 plus 24 times 8 equals 192 plus 8 times 8, 64. That's my multiply step. Last step, and this is all surface area equals, surface area equals, surface area equals. Remember, when you do your homework on your worksheet, this is the line you would start with. Substitute variables first, and yes, show every line from thereafter. Just like weekly assignment number one. 64 plus 192 plus 96 equals 352. Remember my label? I am counting the number of squares. Surface area. The next piece with rectangular prisms is the volume formula. Perhaps the easiest, most commonly known one. What is volume? How many cubes does it take to fill up the box? Length times width times height. Very simple. 12, 2, and 6. Again, it technically doesn't matter which is which. You just need to take the three numbers and multiply. We usually pick the biggest number as the length. Length is 12. Width is 2. Height is 6. Technically doesn't matter which I put in for which, though. 12 times 2 times 6. Volume equals 24 times 6 is 144. What is my label? Cubes. It takes 144 cubes to fill up this object. If I were to stack them in, 144 cubes. Very straightforward formula, not much fuss with it. In our last part, we're going to work backwards with the rectangular prism. Start off with my blank formula. Here's the setup. Somebody already figured out the answer. The answer is 126 squares. That's how many little squares it takes to cover this entire box. The width I'm known is 5. The length I have known is 6. What is the height? Trick is to fill in everything we can. Two. I still have twos. I know the width, so every time I see a W, I'm going to fill in times five. Every time I see a W, times five. Length is six. Find an L. What I don't know is H. I'm going to leave it as an H because it's a variable. I don't need a new variable, so that's H. This is H. There's one last thing I can fill in. Surface area is 126 squares. 126. So this now becomes the place we start at on our worksheet when we do our work. 126 equals all this stuff. Now here's what's nice about the stuff you already know. You already know how to combine terms. So watch how this happens. If I would shrink this piece down, 2 times 6 times 5. 6 times 5 is 30, times 2 is 60. Plus 2 times 6 times h. 2 times 6 is 12, so this is 12h. Plus 2 times 5 times h. 2 times 5 is 10, and that's h. 
So what I'm doing before I even solve is shrinking it down, combining like terms. Now I look at this 60 plus 12H plus 10H. Which of these three terms can I combine? 12 and the 10. So that gives me 22H. Now I am here with a two operation equation. I have addition and multiply. I must get rid of the addition first. I need to get rid of an added 60. What do I add to both sides to get rid of an added 60? I add its opposite. Opposite of 60 is negative 60. Positive 60 and negative 60 give me 0. I'm left with 22H. On the right hand side, negative 60 plus 126 is 66. Now I am here with a multiply. How do I get rid of a multiply 22? Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. 1 over 22. 1 over 22. I can reduce here. I get 22 divided by 22 is 1. This gives me 3. 22's cross off, I'm left with H. H is equal to 3. My label is not squares, remember, I already know the answer of squares. But I can work backwards using my algebra to solve. The missing height, no longer a question mark, is the number 3. Working backwards.